you know, let's go back to putting down the seed. If you're going to put down seed, you, that you need to make sure that seed gets to the soil. So that's when you want to rake, and then you put down that seed to make sure when you spread it, it's going down. The bags will have two rates on them. They'll have the overseeding rate, which will usually it'll stay that in the bag. You know, this bag does up to 18,000 square feet or something to that effect. Usually that's the overseeding rate. It's advertising. So when you're overseeding, you can cover the 18,000 square mm-hmm. feet. But if it's a new lawn, raw dirt, you, you basically double the application like per pounds per thousand yeah. square feet or whatever. And that means you're covering half as much. So mm-hmm. at 18,000 square feet coverage, you'd only be covering nine if it was a brand new lawn because you, you need to get that density to the plant. Right. So you know, depending if you've got like a, a lawn that's thin, maybe you put it down you know, somewhere in between the, the, new, and the new seating right. Uh, um, rate. But as long as you don't go below that 9,000 uh, square foot rate, mm-hmm. um, you know, you're not at risk of like overseeding. Right. And that's important as we learned from the previous po- podcast, more is not better. Right. Use the rate that's recommended. Uh, otherwise, uh, it, it can deter the, the growth of the healthy lawn. Right. And we're, when we're back to our, our common lesson we learned about moderation, which is the hardest thing. I know. It. The hardest thing. I know. It. Right. Um, and also, uh, you know, especially if it's real thin, you may want to put on some straw or uh, chop straw. I love, uh, what is it? Mulch uh, Master. Mulch Master. Yeah. Oh, that's great. That's great. Easy to use. You can. It's in a bag that you can handle. It's it's it's, it's a wonderful product. Yeah, my kind of rule of thumb is, if it's anything bigger than I don't know, the size of your foot, you know, any bare spot bigger than the size of your foot, put sprinkle some of the sh- uh, straw in there, the shredded straw, and then it's going to keep the moisture. It's going to protect the seed, protect that investment. You know, a bale can cover up to eight hundred square feet, mm-hmm. and it's like fourteen ninety nine. It's it's really efficient. I've saved mine for, I think I've had like the same bale in my shed for two and a half years now, and I just go out there and when I have to do redo an area, mm-hmm. I use it out there, sprinkle it. And the reason you want the shredded straw is that straw decomposes from the inside out, mm-hmm. and when it's cut up and shredded, it's going to decompose faster, and you don't have to go rake your you know your newly That's seated right. area. And when you know, those plants are a little tender, yeah. it's going to chop up the small pieces and be used as fertilizer. Right, and it's going to break down um, a lot faster. Otherwise, you put down. We do have the regular straw, but if you put that down, you do have to rake that up because the stalks are just so big; it's not going to break down anytime soon. Yeah, it's not worth it, and no. it's also a good marker so that you can check it out from time to time to see how the new grass is growing. Yeah, and it acts like a mulch, keeps the moisture there. Yeah, it, it really great, and it's clean. You want straw, not hay. That's correct. Hay, hay is, why is that? Hay has the weed seeds in it. That's right. We yeah, don't want hay, to add weed seeds. Hay is for horses. Better for cows. Better for cows. <laughs> Marry a farmer and get all three. Yes. Um, and then you know, there was, with plants, you know, putting down fertilizer later, that, you know, as we talked, that's the recommended procedure. However, I would put down a starter fertilizer when you put down the seed. And the only reason is in order to spread the fertilizer on our larger areas, we do have to walk over the seed. And it is, it's actually a good practice to walk on the seed when it's first put down. It's all about getting that seed to the soil. Right. So it has to have the contact with the soil. Right. So you're going to help it by walking over as you're spreading that fertilizer. And a start of fertilizer, the goal is you're getting phosphorus in there to help develop that root system and make a strong, hardy plant so it can handle those droughts and tough winters. Mm-hmm. But when you put it down in the grasses, you know, if you were to put it down when the grass is like two weeks old or three weeks old and it's still a little tender, you don't want to be walking on it then. So you put down a slow-release starter fertilizer, uh, but put it down right at the same time, and you'll actually do yourself some benefits. And phosphorus helps with root growth. That's where it's after, the roots. Right. Yeah. Yep, because it's the... Uh, nitrogen is the leaves. Right, so the, fer- the three numbers in any fertilizer bag, right. nitrogen in, on the left, phosphorus in the middle, and then potassium is the third number and it's up down all around so nitrogen is up for the the greening and there the top growth yeah right and then uh down for the phosphorus uh that's you know helps develop the root system yep. and then all around you know the potassium is kind of like this is probably not scientifically accurate but i just say it's the vitamin c for the plant it's like essentially yeah the all around like yeah. uh health benefits overall the health benefits yeah it prevents disease so that's why your your fall fertilizers will be higher in the potassium yep. Yep. So, 
Can we talk about clover? This is also a good time to put your clover. Great on. time to put down clover. And I do this every year. And I, I think clover seeds gotten cheaper over the years, to tell you the truth. It, it could, but it, it's amazing how like a three pound bag <gasps> covers like 15,000 square feet. Yeah, you and your neighbor could share a bag and it's not that big, you know, don't, don't, no. don't be scared. And it's pelletized to boot because the clover seed's so small. Yeah. You couldn't handle it. But, uh, you know, I spread the, the clover when I spread the, uh, the, the grass seed uh, like I was feeding the chickens. Just broadcast it with your hand. Yeah. And, and I concentrated on spots where the soil is more compact, where I usually walk over or drive over the lawn. Yes, I drive over the lawn to get to certain places. Or in this poor condition, poor section over my septic system. And clover has just this great benefit. It stays green. It grows where the grass somehow doesn't. Uh, it floats around, too. It, it, it recedes itself. Yeah. And then it produces fertilizer, nitrogen fertilizer for your lawn. It does. It takes nitrogen out of the air. Out of the air. And turns it into an organic Well, the bacteria form. growing on the, the little nodules on the roots do. But right, right. Yeah. And... Makes into an organically available nitrogen for your grass plants. Absolutely wonderful. And then you're saving money. I never fertilize. Uh, sorry about that, Terry. I I, it's all right. I don't fertilize. Whatever makes you successful. And however you want to be successful, we're fine with that. We're just here to You help. know, we're that type of people. That, that's the kind of people we are. <laughs> so, I mean, the only other thing that we run into, and I just caution everybody. I really make a decision this spring. Are you going to prevent the weeds and treat the weeds in the spring in your lawn, or are you going to put down grass seed or, or clover seed or whatever it may be? There, There is one product we sell. It's a weed preventer plus new seeding. Um, it either has uh, tupper sand in it or tenacity, and both of those, they're sort of like growth inhibitors um, that grass are able to process and not be harmed by. Our, mm-hmm. our, our, our turf seeds, where the, you know, a rye grass, Kentucky blue grass, or turf type tall fescue, they can handle these ingredients and not be harmed by them, where crabgrass cannot and other weeds cannot. Those are available. They are a little bit more expensive than your regular weed preventer. So a lot, of, a lot of people will decide they'll just do. I'm getting grass seed down. I'm filling in the lawn this spring, in the fall. Go back through, patch through, patch up the areas maybe didn't come in so great, or mm. um, you know a new area. And then the long term cycle we're working towards is treat your weeds, prevent your weeds in the spring. And then in the fall, you make it so that there's no weeds for the, no room for those weeds to come up the following spring by putting down that grass seed. Sounds simple enough. Yeah, yeah. Because you know, I did look up uh, and get some rates of like all of the weed preventers and weed the herbicides. You know, after you put down a crabgrass preventer, you have to wait 12 weeks before you can put down a grass seed and safely, you know, plant it without you know losing some of that grass seed to mm-hmm. the the crabgrass preventer. And then even after you put down something that's meant for a dandelion and won't harm your established grass, you do have to wait four weeks after you put that down to put down a broadleaf weed herbicide. I see. And it even says to wait, you know, that if you have new grass seed down, you should mow that grass at least three times. So it's it, it's that established before it can handle, you know, those herbicides. Mm. So, you know, just be aware of that and... and you know, we don't want you to lose all that hard work you've done. Right. Cool. Very good. Well, I think this is a great start and get us thinking about, you know, where our placement in the yard is and looking at what uh, what stock's available in the garden center and, you know, look forward to a successful spring. And how I am. You know, every that's the wonderful thing about gardening. Every spring brings new hope. <laughs> that the same thing, the same good things that happened last year will happen again. And the that everything will look like the seed catalog when it when it finally grows out. Right. And sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. And that's that's the excitement of the whole thing. Yeah. Well well I think I have a good feeling. Twenty nineteen is gonna be a good year. Okay, Terry. Yeah. Gonna, no, there's no volcanoes, we should be all right. No, not that I know of. No. However, there is uh, a train that just went by or something. I don't know what that is. Yeah, was. that so we probably just lost those last two minutes of talking, but <laughs> oh well. So Until next time. Okay. Thank you all for listening. For notes from this episode, visit the podcast section of our website at mackeysgrows.com. 
Also, we'd love to hear your topic ideas or questions, so drop us a line through our website's contact page. If you found the information in this podcast useful or simply just enjoyed our chat, we truly appreciate it if you could leave a rating and review on your preferred listening app. It helps share our show with others and lets us know to keep working hard. Thanks again, and remember, where that is and what you love, that's home. Mackey's, where the home grows. <laughs>